Yeah, yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Chapter Tactics. This is episode number 210, where we go over tactics and strategies to help out both new and veteran players alike. I am your host, Magikarp Usefly, also known as Matt, and with me today, as usual, we have the glorious co host of this show, Demeki. Indubitably. 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 And Mr. PhD, John P. <laughs> Greetings, humans. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show where we talk about plastic toys and uh, how to play with our plastic toys to the best of our abilities. Today, we are talking about how to defeat AdMech, how to play AdMech, everything about AdMech you're going to learn on this episode of Chapter Tactics. And we have our veteran AdMech player here. John P., who has been playing AdMech for a very, very long time. How's that's, it been going for you? That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I have literally less than 10 games under my belt. But, <laughs> but you've been reading it for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Reading and playing is different. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'll help where I can. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm in this journey along with everyone, too. Yeah. We're all trying I mean, to figure it out. I'm, I'm yeah. sure I know more than the average person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, dude, it, it's such a huge book and it's so yeah. wordy. Yeah, uh, I definitely have gotten used to all the command phase nonsense and, like, the flow of what to do here and there there. And now it's just got to take all that and put it together with the game plan. (laughs) Yeah, with the game plan. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, Also, by the way, we have a really cool announcement. Right now we are looking to get a new version of the Chapter Tactics intro song, the one that you guys uh, listen to every single time that uh, Chapter Tactics goes on. Uh, if you're into making music and want to get your idea juices going and add your talent to the Frontline Gaming Network to be forever embodied into Chapter Tactics, please send us your rendition of a new intro over on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash dicecheckyt. Upload it to something like uh, Google Drive or upload it to something like SoundCloud SoundCloud, and send it over to us so then we can put the song onto every single chapter tactics Send episode. us that fire mixtape. Yeah. <laughs> if there's no air horns, I send it back. <laughs> oh, God. It has to be the Skrillex. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 just oh, do- my God. Just do the intro, wow, and wow. but just replace everything with an air horn. So it's like, <laughs> beer, 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 beer. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Um, so, yeah, uh, if you guys have anything like that, please send it on over. Val is working so hard on making sure that the podcast network is uh, going as smoothly as possible. And so it would help him out a lot. Be a nice gift if uh, we helped him out. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that really like Chapter Tactics. If you guys want to send in some help, uh, feel free to do so. Mm-hmm. Now... Besides that, got some hype stuff to talk about. Yeah, we do. And we have our hype man, John P., to talk about some cool stuff that's coming up. Hype stuff. Hype stuff. Hype stuff. Hype stuff. Hype stuff. Okay, here we go. So if you visited Warhammer Community at all this week, there's a lot going on over there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. You're telling me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we are here, and we have compiled everything that's been happening. So first things first, Age of Sigmar 3.0. Woo woo. Just launched. Let's go. Um. New edition of Age of Sigmar. If uh, you have a local GW store nearby, um, some of them are actually allowing you to play test Age of Sigmar 3.0. So um, swing by, check it out. Maybe you might get a chance to play the new edition of Age of Sigmar with uh, some models before you even have to buy any. So that's cool. That's a cool thing that Games Workshop is doing there. I I hope that they continue to do something like this because it's a great way to get a... more people into the hobby. Oh, yeah, definitely. The Dominion box was gorgeous. Yeah. Like, the book and everything. Like, yeah. They did a really good job with the box. The yeah. box is really, really good. Yeah. And, like, uh, even at um, our local game store, mm-hmm. bo- both of them, the ones that's the nearest to me, yeah, yeah. Um, both of them have mountains of, like, Dominion boxes, and they're all doing uh, Age of Sigmar stuff. Um, in fact, I went yesterday when I went to go play m- my league match, um, there it was, like, Age of Sigmar night. There was a bunch of people playing Age of Sigmar, just painting up the Dominion uh, models that they had and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone was having a good time. It was a, it was a nice, it was a nice, uh, it was nice, you know, just mm-hmm. seeing a bunch of, but like it was divided. Oh yeah, oh. all right. We had the, there was the corner of Warhammer, like yeah. half of the half of the room was Warhammer for yeah. okay. Age of Sigmar, yeah, and oh. then the other half was. Pokemon and Magic. Oh, oh, the card players versus the yeah, model yeah, players. Yeah, I was able to talk to a little bit to um, 
some Dungeons and Dragons people uh, talk to them. Um, and then I played against uh, uh, with someone that uh, watches our videos, and you played against them too. Yes, I did. The Grey yeah. Knights player. Yeah. You have to play I, against I, him. I play against him some, <laughs> sometime within the next week or two. Yeah, his name yeah. is Chris. Yes. You're out there. John P's got your number. Yeah, he's yeah. Gonna, he's gonna wa- he's gonna uh, molly wop you. I, I don't have, but what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your Discord number. Oh yeah. <laughs> is that what you mean? <laughs> oh oh wait, you you don't fight him? Oh, I do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I do have to fight him. Oh, you're, 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 I, was, I was trying to make a joke out of it. Oh, oh okay, okay. Oh. Cut that part. <laughs> uh, what else you got for us? Yeah, in addition to that, uh, also obviously the Dominion box uh, has been out, if you haven't heard. But in addition to that, they also have the starter sets uh, with Stormcast, Eternals, and the Orcs. Very similar to how they did for 40K. There are three levels. Uh, I don't remember the names of them, but <laughs> I'm sure you can look it up and find it out. Um, they have it's one is like a very very basic mm-hmm. one with infantry and troops. Another one has like it's intermediate, and the last one's like advanced. And then obviously the the big boy is going to be the Dominion Star set. I kind of mm-hmm. look at it like kill team, then five hundred point, and then a thousand. Yeah, that's yeah. what I look at it. Yeah, yeah. and the yeah. last one's like two thousand. Yeah, uh, or fifteen hundred, probably more like fifteen hundred. Yeah. Uh, in addition to those star sets, you also have oh, you also you also have the starting sets for uh, painting also. So you get, um, it comes with like a few models, some paints, some brushes, et cetera. Uh, one for Stormcast and one for Orcs. So yeah. pretty cool. Uh, n- nice little way for people to get into the lobby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And on, like, honestly, I feel like that those models, the Orcs and the Stormcast Eternals are models that you can actually get away with using contrast paints a lot. And oh yeah, that, definitely. Uh, yeah, you're you're working on. Yeah, so the, the Hobgoblins, uh, I'm actually uh, prime them Using uh, what is it? Bo- um, Wraithbone. Wraithbone. <laughs> Wraithbone. <laughs> Wraithbone. I used uh, so I was going the contrast me- method just with their skin, and I went with uh, the a red one of the red contrast paints. Mm-hmm. It looks really nice. Yeah, and um, it's surprisingly easy. But everything else I'm doing in in other in other paints. Yeah, but yeah, I went with that just to make it my job my job a little bit easier and to try to get uh, as many done as quickly as possible. Yeah. They're like tiny models too. They're like little. Yeah. There's a lot of detail for that little tiny yeah. model too. Yeah. I was surprised. And like honestly, it, it's they look like they're easy models mm-hmm. to kind of paint up. It's not like very very. I, I feel like that Games Workshop did a good job mm-hmm. in the sense of having because like I we we know that AOS models are beautifully made. Like their plastic oh, yeah. is amazing, and some of their models are really really hard to paint. But Stormcast Eternals and Oryx really aren't that hard to paint. Nope. And so it's like, it's it's kind of nice, you know, that mm-hmm. their starter set comes with armies that are relatively easy to paint, kind of like Indominus, where it was like Space Marines and Necrons. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And same with the uh, the previous one, Soul Wars. It was the uh, Night Haunt and the Stormcast Eternals. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I guess Night Haunt might be a little harder, but you can, harder, you, yeah. can, you can get away with like an easier paint scheme on them. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you just yeah. paint them like wraiths. Jumpy's yeah. gonna give him a shot. He's yeah. gonna take the ones I got already. And yeah. He's gonna paint them up. Uh, uh, obviously, Matt and I both both got a uh, airbrush recently. So the Raf, <laughs> um, I, I want to try out the uh, wraith. The sorry, the wraiths. To I want to practice some airbrushing on them. Ooh, um, some nice way to maybe blend some colors. Uh, use some inks. Yeah, boy, it's gonna be fun. Get on uh, that ink train. Uh, maybe <laughs> practice some OSL lighting, etc. Ooh, so, yeah. This man's already getting into advanced techniques. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, wait, what is OSL? Uh, Isn't that op- ASL? <laughs> 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 sex language. <laughs> it's uh, an no, like, object I, sex I, language. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't say what I wanted to say. <laughs> what, what 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 is OSL? Uh, oh, uh, object source lighting. Yeah. Oh, I got you. I got you. So glows. Yeah. So yeah. glows. Okay. Yeah. So right. it looks like it's glowing. Yeah. Like one yeah. has like a little lantern, so yeah. like you use the lantern as the light light source. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'll be fun. Okay. Uh, what else you got? In addition to that, uh, obviously, new kill team um, is coming out. New kill team, very exciting. It's centered around Octarius Data. <laughs> <What? laughs> I guess is what <laughs> they're, they're calling it. Something, yeah. something Octarius. Um, but yeah, that's coming out. They've got the two new kill teams, um, the Death Corps Krieg, and then the Orcs. The, the huge orc model actually looks pretty cool. He looks like he's he beat up an imperial guardsman and took his outfit. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it's just like it's just like in those like uh, sneaky spy movies where they're like, oh, they have to beat up this guard and they dress up as the guard mm-hmm. and yeah. like they get away with it. That's what he looks like. But he's an orc. I, I just want orc. you know what you know what people should do. They should make orcs, but make them like the thumb orcs. 
Oh. Like from Spy Kids, from like Spy kids, kids make them like thumbs, and then that, that'd be that'd be kind of cool. Okay, anyways, you can do that. You have a three D printer. <laughs> um, two more to go. In addition to that, we've also got a new Cheridon book coming. Mm -hmm. That one has um, some new armies of renown. One for um, sisters, and I think the other ones for um, Skatari, um, which we're going to be talking about a lot later in this episode. Mm -hmm. And they've also included all the updates for Chaos Space Marines. Uh, they've Took all the updates over, I guess, like the past year, compiled them, and put them in that book. Will they get two wounds? Probably not. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It'd be kind of cool. Well, I mean, cool, the, the hybris thing is Bellacor's rules. Oh, yeah. Through. I yeah, forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, Bellacor, yep. 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 I still it, haven't it, built him yet. You know, um, I was talking to people earlier this morning, and they were like, because one of them has a Tyranid's, um, uh, what's it called, uh, mission, because it's like under the sea or something like that. Right? Oh, under yeah, the yeah. sea. Yeah. Um, so they're saying, what if you get an army renowned of Tyranids? And I was like, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what? If it does, I'll eat my own sock. The, I uh, think, the, um, yeah, there's a white dwarf coming out with Nids yeah. rules, maybe. Yeah. Uh, don't do this to me. Yeah. There's don't do uh, this to me. I already have a white dwarf of Harlequins. <laughs> don't make me have to buy another one. <laughs> two arms. So I got edge. I got educated actually over the weekend on white dwarf at the games workshop. And I didn't mm -hmm. realize there's a bunch of space marine rules. Are there? In oh, the successor chapters. Yeah, the successor oh, yeah, yeah. chapters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. So, like, I was just like, oh, this is interesting. Mm. So, I might have to get a subscription to the White Door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe. Go I won't. <laughs> but <laughs> go for dice check. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. And lastly, a uh, new Grey Knights model has been announced for Castell and Crow. It's beautiful. It's the dude with the, the fire sword and the flag on his back. Looks amazing. I don't know if you guys checked it out yet. Yeah, I saw it. It's it's. Whew. That's all Who? I gotta say. Castling Crow. Castling yeah. Crow. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he's a uh, Primaris, right? No, I I don't recall. I just looked at the picture. I didn't actually read anything because I don't uh, know how to read. Yeah, um, I heard that. Um, uh, Castling Crow. Like, okay, so if you think <laughs> about it, right? And this is really interesting. Um, if you think about it, from a production standpoint, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you are building a new cast, like a new model. Um, you don't want to build just one model because then that's like, you kind of waste resources that way yeah. for like, yeah. you know, molds and stuff. So I'm guessing this is shot in the dark, totally a rumor can 100% not be true, but I am thinking that there might be some new great night models because if mm -hmm. they already revealed a new model for castle and crow, I can only imagine that they already set up new models as well to be printed along with him. Well, they got the box there coming out too. Yeah. Ooh, we so don't even know what's in that. It could yeah. possibly also be new case on thousand sons models. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, uh, they also confirmed some other new models. Bonus, <laughs> bonus <laughs> hype. Yeah. Black Templars. Yep, yeah, boy. boy. Yeah, Codex boy. Codex slash supplement. And then also some new models for a bunch of stuff that hasn't been primaricized yet. Mm -hmm. That sounds doesn't Weird. sound primaricized. Like primaricized. It sounds like <laughs> you're getting circumcised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, like I'm, I'm actually really excited for the Black Templar stuff. Yeah, same. It's a. Uh, it's such an underrepresented army. I feel. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, you don't hear much about it, but you know, the fanboys are fanboys. They, yeah. they love their Black Templars. Mm -hmm. and, but, and, and oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, and also, if. Grey Knights and K Suns come in and they just completely dominate everything and they're just throwing mortal wounds out. Black Templars, man. Yep, that's mm -hmm. it. That's the that's the answer. Black mm -hmm. Templars are gonna be really, really good at that point. Mm -hmm. Just natural five up feel no pains. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just saying it's gonna be a good time. Yeah. Devout pushing everybody. Devout push. I'm gonna have to go buy some Hounds of Markai for my Space Wolves army. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right. Is that all you got for uh, hype, hype, hype? Uh, let me just go on Warhammer community and make sure I yeah. got everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's that's all I got for today. If uh, if you if you feel like we missed something or you want to go check out more news, uh, Warhammer community, uh, your source for all your Warhammer news. Heck yeah, boy. Uh, now we have a did you know for our lore aspect of this podcast, this one is about orcs. Orcs, orcs, orcs. And this one's about Grizzguts. Grizzguts, if you guys didn't know, was an orc warlord who launched a wog into the Morlock system. Using warp travel, Grizzguts and his boys traveled back in time and came back into the Materium right before they left. So they literally went into the warp, and then they just came back like two seconds before they left. And what Grizzguts decided to do was to kill off his earlier self so he could take his own gun. 
so he can have a spare of his own gun. <laughs> so funny. Oh, my God. We, we love orc lore. Yeah. Or, sorry, we love the orc lore. Orc lore is great. Yeah. Orc lore is great. Like, can you imagine you're just, like, time to go back in time? Yes. And then, like, your own self. This is, like, some Rick and Morty stuff. Yeah. Where, like, Rick just comes back out of the out of the warp, and he's just like, bah, I, know, I love uh. this gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's the did you know for today. Um, they yeah. should make a model for this guy. It's just him with two of his the gun, <laughs> two two of his guns. Yeah, make him like a Keller morph. Oh yeah, <laughs> Grizz guts. Yeah. All right. So now we're gonna go on to the actual topic of this episode. I don't know why I said it like that, but we're gonna go into that. Uh, but before we do that, quick shout out to Frontline Gaming because this show is brought to you by the Frontline Gaming Network over at FrontlineGaming.org where you can get amazing game mats for not just your 40K games, but also almost any tabletop game out there. We're talking your X-Wings, we're talking your Rebellions, we're talking almost any mini game that's out there. Uh, you can purchase Minister that. You can purchase miniatures at a discount and join some of the largest 40K events in the industry. I think the most recent one that's coming up is Lone Star Open. Lone Star Open. Yeah, boy. And uh, they also have the largest 40K podcast network in the business with shows like Signals from the Frontline, Chapter Tactics, which you're listening to right now, 40K Game Changers, 40K Stats Center, Grim After Dark, and so much more. That's FrontlineGaming.org or... You can click on the link of the description of this podcast on all the social media goodies. And I think, um, if I recall correctly, 40K Game Changers just launched their newest season as well. So uh, they should have uh, some new stuff on that front. So that'll be very interesting. If you guys haven't listened to 40K Game Changers, you guys should. Uh, it's They basically interview the people that have um, influenced the scene of 40K um, like very largely. The guys that yeah. changed the game? Yeah. Wow. 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 <laughs> wait, they, 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 wait, they changed the game? Can I talk to them about Tao? <laughs> uh, but it's it's a good one. And it's like, it's, um, I forgot who hosts it, but uh, he does like radio shows. So mm. like, it's very high production Ooh. and the interviews are really, really nice. It's a, it's a good, it's a good podcast. You guys should go check it out if you guys haven't listened to it yet. If you're interested in 40K stuff. Now, on to the actual topic of chapter 10. Why am I doing that? I don't know why. I'm like... <laughs> Dude, are you, are you just like, you're trying to, to, I don't know, add more to your, like, To my persona. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say to your portfolio. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. like sometimes when we record videos, like, whenever we say something, we like we feel like we need to say it in, like, a different accent. Like, yeah. Clarky. I, <laughs> I now roll seven dice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hitting on threes. Yeah. Or you could be like, uh, um, uh, Tactics and be like blaster, 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 dark lands, dark lands, dark lands. <laughs> uh, so on to the actual topic of this episode. Close your guys' eyes uh, unless you're driving, and I'm gonna whisper some sweet nothings into your ear. Admech has become the new big bad in Ninth Edition. People are still upset about Drakari and their strength, but now the new hotness is the Adeptus Mechanicus Ninth Edition Codex. With its large array of last cannons, big blobs of troops, and buffs on top of other buffs, how do we deal with such a strong army? Try to roll my R, couldn't do it. Dude, you got like three R's. Yeah, army. Oh, there it is. Oh, he can, he can roll his yeah. R's. Um, you know, actually, before we go into this, uh, there was a major that came out um, yeah. this weekend. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, what was yeah. it? The Show Me Showdown, something yep. like that? The Show Me Showdown. Um. Do you, do you guys know anything about it? Uh, I know that uh, uh, Black Templars player Ben Sherwin uh, actually finished first, right? With Admech? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yes. I thought that you were going to say Black Templars got into first. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I think was, Dark was Angels true. was second, right? It was like... No, I don't think so. I know they were top five. Yeah. Um, but literally everything in that top ten was Drakari and Admech. Oh, really? That was it, yeah. Um, on a side note as well, there was a local GT near us in Irvine that uh, our friend Bricky, if you guys don't know Bricky, Bricky from Adeptus Ridiculous, um, and over on Dice Check, he uh, entered a GT this past weekend over in Irvine called Dice Hammer. Got top 10. Yeah. Uh, placed number eight and uh, got second most, uh, second best painted army. Yeah. So congrats to him. Go ahead and uh, head on over to Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Bricky so then he could uh, uh, and tell him congratulations yeah. for winning. Also, tell him to paint his Silent King. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 
Sorry. Oh, we just wanted to correct. Uh, Show Me Showdown second place actually was Dark Angels. Oh, it was? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Okay, cool. Who was it? Charlie Andre. He's part of Frozen North Gaming, which yeah. so yeah. is uh, yeah. Ben. Frozen, yeah. Frozen North Gaming seemed to dominate this tournament. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely dominated that one uh, That when, when I was looking at the top ten. Uh, yeah. And uh, I don't think that Art of War was in it either. Um, I don't think that there was a single person in there. Yeah. Uh, but I believe that Vanguard Tactics, Nick something, Nick Kniev or something, was in number 18, mm. uh, 18th place, and he also brought uh, Admech. Yeah. Nick yeah. Kiever. Yeah, Nick Kiever. Uh, the reason why Art of War might probably didn't go there is I think the tournament's in the Midwest somewhere, and they're from Florida, so maybe yeah. they didn't want to make the yeah, trip yeah, yeah, for yeah. whatever reason. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, I just wanted to bring that up because half of the, or the top 10 was literally Jakari and Admech uh, because just wanted to talk about like how much Admech has kind of just been becoming a nuisance uh, in, in the meta now, right? They're just like taking over. A lot of people were, were scared about Jakari, but what about this Admech coming in now that people are fleshing it out, mm -hmm. uh, starting to bring in different lists and everything? What do you guys think about Admech so far? Have you guys played against it, played it? All that stuff. Well, I know you pointed out, like, that one stratagem to begin with, and they already, like, fact it, right? Oh, Booster's Thrust? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, there's already been some nerves. Much needed. Um, but, yes, uh, they got rid of, or they made it so that you cannot use booster Thrust on a turn that you originally came down. Um mm -hmm for the Taraxi, uh, so that you actually have to interact with the Taraxi. <laughs> yeah. They can be on the map on your opponent's side. Um, your opponent's turn. So, yeah, they did that. They also uh, nerfed Galvanic Boost so that you can't stack that buff. Like you don't use it on a unit if it hasn't already been affected by that buff. Yeah. And they did some other stuff for Stygies for some reason. They nerfed Stygies. I don't know why, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stygies is not a problem. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, GW tends to do that every yeah, once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're just like, they just throw darts at the boards like yeah, like, for the last one, yeah. the last thing that they want to nerf. Right. And they're just like, yeah. <laughs> like, all right, these two for sure. And then, all right, Stygies. Stygies. <laughs> Screw them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So being the resident AdMech player here, uh, you, I think that you only played like one game of them in eighth edition, um, and then went over into ninth edition with them. Uh, but uh, I played against Admech a lot um, on TTS and stuff. Uh, obviously during like COVID times, everything mm -hmm. like that. So I kind of knew how eighth edition Admech kind of worked. Um, transitioning over to ninth edition, what is it like? Oh, what's it like? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it seemed like you you were trailing to oh. like more, but yeah. yes, yes. Uh, what's it like? Definitely, uh, at the end of 8th, everyone was running just big blobs of uh, Kyphrons, mm -hmm. uh, Breachers, uh, a bunch of Cerebus Raiders, uh, stuff like that. And it's definitely shifted because of one simple change. And that simple change was uh, increasing the number that you can take in this guitar unit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but previously, you could only you used to be able to max out at 10, or is it 15? It was less than 20, but yeah. now you can bring 20. <laughs> and on top of uh, being able to bring 20, they also give a bunch of cool stratagems uh, for their shooting phase. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they also made it so that uh, the tech priests and Skatari marshals can provide them with various buffs to make them unstoppable. Yeah. Um, obviously, people are very scared of Skatari blobs, but I think one of the bigger f factors uh, that makes the army so well, so good, is just... The Skatari Marshal coming in at a ridiculously cheap price point of 45 points. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, it, it just does so much for the army. It lets them reroll wound rolls of one. It lets them, if you take a specific relic, uh, the Exemplar's Eternity, which everyone does, they can also reroll the hit rolls of one. Uh, so you got 20 man blob rerolling, uh, shooting like 80 shots uh, if you use the stratagem, or 60 shots if it's uh, Vanguard's. Um, we run once, we run to hit, we run once to wound. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're feeling real spicy, yeah. you could be like, oh, on on hit rolls of four, I wound you. Yeah, that the, the, the <laughs> stratagem <laughs> uh, in rich grounds for yeah. vanguards. Yeah, hit rolls of four, auto wounds. That thing is nasty. That thing's pretty nasty. Yeah. And on top of that, you combine the buffs from the Tech Priest Manipulus, um, Galvanic Boost. You point at a unit, um, you increase the, the range of the weapons by six inches, and you give them an additional AP. Now, for, for the uh, Skatari... Correct me if I'm wrong. They're eight points, right, per model right yep. now? Yep, eight points. Eight points per model. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really cheap. Yeah, how much is the Termagant? Uh, five points. How much is the uh, Devil Gaunt? Uh, seven points. 
and they're, you deal and, way more damage yeah. than yeah. I ever could. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> that that's ridiculous because they're cheaper than a fire warrior. Fire yeah. warrior is nine points. Yeah, has no AP. Yeah, so you're looking at a hundred and sixty point blob that can just like just mow down things. Right. And I think that's like the biggest problem with Admech is that everything is just actually incredibly cheap mm -hmm. for what they provide for their stats. Mm -hmm. And so they not only have a lot on the board, mm -hmm. uh, they also have just like a lot of efficiency in terms, you know, like the Taraxi, which yeah. is very 90, efficient. 95 points for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Fly has flamers. It can fall back to charge. Yeah. I guess a built-in shock assault like ability. Yeah. And it's Same. not even, uh, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, that's it. That was uh, it. <laughs> and, and it's yeah. not even like um, that you have to kit them out with like special guns. Like look at the Fusilov. Uh, right, like mm -hmm. that one, you just bring bare bones because its stat lines and you know is just good. It's just so good and it's just so efficient that you just bring it. You bring three of them because they they just work. It doesn't matter if you shoot at them. It does, they they and it players don't care. Yeah, <laughs> you got your fusil off right here. Yeah, right here. You want it to get shot at because it it's yeah. minus one to hit. You spend an extra twenty points to take the chaff launcher. It makes it so that all incoming damage is minus one to a minimum of one. Yeah. So for one hundred fifty points, you got minus one to hit, minus one damage, uh, deals mortal wounds, deal yeah, like crazy, <laughs> and t can turn off auras, can have the movement of units. Mm -hmm. uh, Wait, it turns off auras too. Yeah, if you use a stratagem. Oh, it, I it was can. about to say, this thing's starting to sound more and more like Mortarian. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? And for 150 points, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, he, yeah. And the, the crazy thing about them is that uh, they move mm -hmm. first, right? So, like, they move, and then they can pivot, and mm -hmm. then they can move again. Yep. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you could just keep flying over stuff. If you bring three of them, it's hard to take them down. Um, well, it's not too hard to take them down. Yeah. But it's like shooting at, like, Ripper Swarms. You don't. You kind of don't want to because it's just, like, yeah. it's just kind of a jerk. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to, but you have to. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah. doing stuff and it's annoying. It's yeah, a pest. And then uh, what's what's another big problem with Admech? Well, I want to bring up all the stuff that's ah. the the chicken well, the, the chicken, chicken walkers, walkers the big chickens. ones. Yeah, yeah, last chickens are definitely a problem. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so the last chickens uh, are the Iron Star Balistarius. You can bring them in big blobs. They move ten inches. Uh, they have a stratagem where you can auto advance six and ignore the advance and shoot penalty. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the twin <laughs> Cognus Last Cannon is an assault weapon. Um, so, you know, obviously, if you choose not to, you could still advance and shoot with that weapon. Mm -hmm. um, that gun is also 48 inches <laughs> in range. <laughs> so, if you move, auto advance six, and you shoot, you essentially have a 54 inch threat range. Yeah. Um, on top of that, strength nine minus three, D3 plus, plus three. three. Doesn't have to be within half range or anything. We're talking like almost a liquefier gun. Yeah. Uh, entropy equivalent. cannon almost. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it's built better in. than an entropy cannon. Yep. Yeah. Because it's now nine strength. Yeah. Well, the entropy cannon is at minus four AP. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's the, that's the trade off. The, the uh, trade off. Yep. On top of all that, it only costs 75 points. <laughs> <laughs> How much does a plague burst crawler cost? Uh, 140, I think. 140, so it's about, if you bring two chicken walkers, that's about... 150. 150, yeah. 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 It's a little bit more expensive than a Plague Burst Crawler, but more mobile. Yeah, more mobile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely more mobile. Yeah. Every time that I fought against Admech in Ninth Edition, I have not killed a chicken walker. Uh, I've killed chicken walkers, like, maybe one unit, but I've never wiped, like, both... Or all the chicken walkers. Yeah. Because it's just so hard to get to. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, because they could just they can literally just chill on the very back line mm -hmm. um, at all times. And yeah. yeah. It's almost like they're artillery, but not. Yeah, yeah. but not. Yeah. 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 Uh, what else is broken about Admech? Uh, uh, Holy Order of the Logi. <laughs> uh, so Holy Order of the Logi is you spend 25 points to induct in your tech priest. Everyone is bringing a tech priest manipulus nowadays. So you, you induct your tech priest manipulus into the Holy Order of the Logi, and in your command phase, you point at a unit, probably a 20-man blob of Skatari, either vanguards or rangers. Mm -hmm. Point at them, and they can ignore AP1 and AP2. That's really oh. good. Oh. You can also give them transhuman and stuff, right? Yeah, uh, that's <laughs> next, actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was next on the list. Uh, but yeah, everyone's bringing that in combination with the Lucius Forge world. Mm -hmm. uh, with Lucius, you get an extra three inches to your guns, and you also increase your AP by one on damage one weapons, which people will want to shoot into your your Skatari blobs with because they are one wound each. But your Skatari blobs are going to be saving on threes, uh, ignoring mm -hmm. AP one, AP two. I was yep. about to ask. Yep. Uh, yep. I was about to say, what's their normal save? Because like in, ignore AP one, AP two is huge, especially against yeah. the mortar on a plague burst. Yeah, because it's I'm, only yeah. minus two AP. You essentially have a four up invuln at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because mm -hmm. no one's going to be you. 
anything AP3 is essentially anti-tank. Yeah. yeah. And you don't want to shoot yeah, that. Yeah, using anti-tank to shoot at a 20-man blob. Uh, not good. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Oh. Uh, and last but not least, the Warlord trait. One of the Warlord traits for Lucius. Sorry, that wasn't last but not least. This is the cherry we're just, on top. We're, we're yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, one of the Warlord traits for Lucius, uh, Luminescent Blessings. Uh, you point at a unit, and uh, they cannot be wounded on anything less than a four. I'm modified. So, transhuman. Transhuman. Yeah, transhuman. You take that, you take Holy mm. of the Law Guy, you take Lucius. You just have a 20-man blob. Saving on threes, only being wounded on fours. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. And then if they bring, uh, if they bring breachers, mm-hmm. troops with T five. Yeah, T five <laughs> troops. <Yep>. Uh, <laughs> can breach. Yep. Can breach even though they're bikes because yep. they just have a rule. Is just like ah, ignore yeah. that rule. Okay, <laughs> on, but wait, there's more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you can use a stratagem called the host in, in the intermediary. And you can grab your uh, one of your alphas, either the Ranger Alpha or the Vanguard Alpha, a Warlord trait. Um, some of these Warlord traits are pretty nasty. Uh, first one is Multitasking Cortex. Mm-hmm. You can make it so that a specific unit can shoot and perform an action without failing. Uh, great for doing stuff like banners, scramblers, yep. um, data, uh, etc. <laughs> you know, you know who else has that? Space Marines Space have Marines that. Space Marines has that. But they, they have to spend CP. <laughs> this one's CP. free. Yeah, this one's, well, it's a Warlord trait. Yeah. They spent one CP for it, technically. Well, technically. But, yeah. 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 <laughs> you can do it every turn. Yeah. Oh, I guess you pay, you spend one CP, you can do it the rest of the game. Yeah. <laughs> that one, you spend two CP per turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there's also s- Program Retreat, makes it so that you can fall back and shoot. Firepoint Telemetry Cache, uh, you can... Get an additional plus one to your cover safe. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. There's a lot did of they, stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Did they give them anything for the psychic phase, like a relic or anything, to deny any type of psychic power? Uh, if for a specific Forge World, Riza, but no one's no one's playing Riza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not Riza. Sorry, not Riza. The um, Riza. Graya. 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 Yeah. 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 What what uh what Forge Worlds do you know? People play a lot of right now. Uh, the the hot topic when the Codex first came out was Mars versus Lucius, and um. Lucius has proven to win because um, everyone's just bringing Lucius nowadays, mm-hmm. especially with uh, Luminous and Blessings. Mm-hmm. On top of that, uh, the Relic Solar Flare. You can Solar Flare! Solar Flare! <laughs> <laughs> Close your eyes! Solar Flare! <laughs> Krillin, no! No! <laughs> um, but yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Solar Flare, it works the same way as the Necron's Relic. I forget what it's called. Um, but yeah, you can Deep Strike turn one um, with a blob of Skatari. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can take that unit put it somewhere else, mm-hmm. and then have that unit maybe with your transhuman, with your ignore AP1, AP2 yeah. in the middle of the battlefield, uh, with enriched rounds, sh- shooting 60 times, auto wounding on hit rolls of four, and uh, <laughs> just killing anything in this way. <laughs> yeah. This is a very, s- it's turned out to just become a very sturdy gunline army that puts out very efficient shooting. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Not easy to deal with. I don't, uh, I don't know what Mac- that's like. Uh-huh. Mackie, have you have you fought against Admech yet? <laughs> yeah, but it was uh, it was <laughs> Drakari Ninth Edition versus Admech Eighth Edition. Eighth edition. edition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so you haven't fought Ninth Edition. No, I haven't fought Ninth Edition yet. No. Now speaking from someone that has fought against it multiple times now. <laughs> Man, they hurt, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> just, some of their strats are very, very efficient. Like the, like I said, the enriched rounds. Yeah, amazing. Such mm-hmm. a good strat for one CP. Yeah, for one CP, the strat that lets chicken walkers uh, advance and shoot is mm-hmm. also very, very scary. It's really, really hard to fight against Admech. Yeah. Um, you know, you got your Fusilovs running around or flying around, dropping off mortal wounds. You've got your uh, Balistaris, right? The yeah. chicken walkers in the back shooting off last cannons, D3 plus three. You've got your Skitari capping objectives being hard to mow down. Uh, you've got your marshals going around doing whatever the heck they do. <laughs> and then the person is just saying, I 0010101 on my command phase. <laughs> and I'm just, yeah. And I'm just like, what are you talking about? It's like this- the little stick of incense up there behind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they pray to the Omni yeah. God. Yeah. Omni- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they thank GW for yeah. the G Codex. Uh, there's a lots of, lots of good stuff when it yeah. comes to Admech. What now, was, how do we defeat them? Yeah, that's the big question. That, that is the big well, question. I would like to ask you, Matt, as someone who's played them twice and beaten mm-hmm. them twice, what did you do to uh, to beat Admech? Uh, I think, so when it comes to Admech, and like this is the same thing that happens like when Jakari comes out. Whenever there's going to be a new codex that comes out, people are going to obviously be like, oh, it's busted, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because power creep, right? Quote, yeah. unquote. Yeah. Um, and then you have 
like no one's talked about sisters yet. Yeah. Uh, we don't even know what sisters are going to be able to do. Mm -hmm. I, from what I've heard, it's been mostly like a side grade and maybe just a little bit better. Uh, so I, I, we, we'd have to get Bricky onto an episode to talk about sisters a little yeah. bit. Uh, but, um, yeah, dude, like going up against Admech, it is not a fun time. Um, if you're bringing anything big, if you have something that they can shoot at that, uh, that's big it's very very hard because they're just going to die mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what it is they they're just going to die mm -hmm. like i would want to see what the chickens are going to do to like something like mortarian right because you can't even you can't they they don't even have to be in a range of like anvil or glooming bloat or whatever mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter um the only way that i have found to really go up against admec is just to tie them up uh bad touch them as much as you possibly can that's the only way that I found that works against Admech. And I like running a lot of melee armies. So mm -hmm. that's the biggest way that I can think of fighting against Admech is just doing that and bad touching. Yeah. Um, wrapping, making sure stuff can't fall back. Um, if you have something that like Harlequins would be great against Admech uh, because they can just use, uh, I think it's called Twilight Encore. Um, one, it's like a one CP strat where if something falls back, uh, they could just move six inches and mm -hmm. back into engagement range. So you kind of just stick them in combat. Black Templars, two up, can't fall back. Yeah. Um, you know, but you have to get into combat. Harlequins have a great way to do that. They could just bring a Death Jester, turn off Overwatch, charge into a unit. If they don't wipe it, that's fine. They could just Twilight Encore back into them. Mm -hmm. um, just You just have to find ways to make it so then their priority when it comes to shooting is very minimalized because you have a lot of stuff touching them. Yeah. No one likes to be touched badly. No mm. one. Bad touch, bad touch. Bad touch, bad touch. Yeah, yeah. and then something you also did really well against me is you used uh, the big terrain that we have to your advantage also. Mm -hmm. like, um, you, Oh, the there, trees we, and Yeah, stuff. the tree is essentially a three-story building, and you used that really well to hide your guys. Yeah. Um, used to, uh, I guess, to obstruct uh, so that I couldn't shoot you with my big guns. Yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah, I know, I know not many places <laughs> are going <laughs> to have something that's like a three-story building like that. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. obviously... I th the best thing you can do is just learn how to use your terrain <laughs> and mm. use it to the best of your abilities. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that with Admech now, it's going to definitely show, um, if they haven't already figured it out, a lot of local game stores and places like majors and tournaments to really look at their terrain mm -hmm. and see if there is enough obscuring, if there, if your terrain is good enough, because that's the make or break when it comes against Admech. It's not, yeah. like, the army's good. Don't get me wrong. It's a strong army. It's yeah. really good. But... It depend the what whether you have a chance or not is really going to depend on the terrain mm -hmm. because if the terrain is very minuscule when it comes to admech, then you just lose. Right. There is no way that you can come back from that. Uh, if they get turn one, there's absolutely no way you can come back from it. It's it's impossible yeah, because they could just shoot down everything. Yeah, especially if you didn't deploy super well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely feel like if I were to have taken like Admech into like an LGS. Um, even our local LGS doesn't have super great terrain. If I were to take that and just go against a random guy uh, with <laughs> that terrain, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be a good time for the other person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, um, yeah. Cause it's all, it's all very like scenic based. Right. And yeah. the, especially like the, uh, the drill one yeah. where there's no real buildings. It's, it's just, it's, a, a refinery yeah, and stuff. yeah it's like this really slim refinery and there's holes everywhere so yeah. you just see through everything mm -hmm. yeah I, I had to like tell my opponent i'm like why don't we just say the entire bottom of this <laughs> is obscuring yeah and, and like when it when it comes to terrain being very very important right now right um like even the warhammer official like the gw terrain uh uh example that they came out with <laughs> right yeah, that thing yeah. that thing <laughs> If you were to go up against Admech with that, like, you lose. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. just lose. <laughs> I think there's one where it has four big buildings in the center yeah. and then three huge firing lanes on each side of them. Yeah. 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 You lose. Yeah, you lose. <laughs> you lose. And, and it's not because, like, oh, uh, well, it, it, that's not fair because then your firing armies don't have a firing lane. Well, that's kind of, like, the point, right? Yeah. Like, they, you need to be able to move around. That That's why you gave Balisari's, right, mm -hmm. like, a tent, you know, 
movement and then also an auto an auto advance and ignoring uh, penalties to advancing to shoot, yeah. to shoot is because you want them to be more mobile. Yeah. You know, you have your planes and everything. Like, Admech will be fine if there is a little bit more terrain on the map. It's like yep. that one meme of, like, the towel player being <laughs> like, is this enough terrain? And there's, like, only one <laughs> like, terrain yeah. on the board. You know? <laughs> one building. <laughs> uh, and I think that's the make or break. Um, but one big thing is uh, how, how do we deal with something like the last cannon chickens? Cause like, <laughs> how do we do that? Cause what, what's their, what's their stat profile? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, yeah. Move 10 inches. Can all advance six if you use a stratagem. Um, mm -hmm. T six, six wounds. Chances are people are, are bringing them a big blobs of like two, two plus. Some, some people bring them smaller, uh, squads, like in units of two. Some people bring them in like squads of five. Um, oh, you can take them in squads of five. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 15. Um, 15. <laughs> what, fi what? 15 oh. chicken walkers? <laughs> yeah. If you, if you bring three units, 15. yeah. <laughs> how, yeah. how many points is that for 15? Uh, 150 times 15. Oh. Oh, wow. Well, oh, there so are 1,500 points? Oh, sorry. 75 times 15. I'm oh, bad. okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's harder. Oh, <laughs> <times 15. laughs> I don't um, know. If uh, our lovely uh, guy yeah, behind the computer. Hey, Raph, <laughs> tell us what's 75 <laughs> times 15. <laughs> Yeah. 1,000, 1, 125. Yeah. That's way too expensive. That is, that's a lot, but yeah. it's very efficient. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but besides the last cannons, what's there other grounds on there? Uh, that's it. That's it's it? Last just cannon. last cannon? You, pick, you just pick the last, last Yeah, you pick the last cannon or you pick the auto cannon. But, mm -hmm. I mean, if there's any form of tank on the other opponent, they, the last cannon will find it and it'll kill it. And it'll kill it. Yeah. Do they have an embol save? They have a six up. A six up embol? Yep. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not bad. Six wounds. Move around. You yeah. just stick them in the back. I feel like that running maybe three of them Yeah. Uh, per... Unit is probably fine. Yeah. Um, I feel like that five is a little bit ridiculous yeah. because not a lot of people are going to bring vehicles. I mean, like, vehicles are already bad now. Yeah. Like, no one brings vehicles besides, like, Imp Guard and death some guard. Death Guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, besides that, but even with Death Guard, you know, th it's D3 plus three. So yep. yeah, you're so looking at D3 plus two instead. <laughs> yeah, D3 plus two. So it's yep. still flat three five, damage. Yeah, three to yep. five. Yeah. At, at the very least, yeah. which is going to mow down a Plague Burst Crawler, mm -hmm. yeah. especially since it's strength nine. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? How do you fight against a chicken walker? <laughs> uh, the only thing I can really think of is just hide from, use your terrain to your advantage. You yeah. got It's like playing a stealth game, really. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the last can't, the Iron Star Bell Star is like the, the, the turret, the sentry turret that's just looking, it's yeah. waiting. And then you just got to jump from wall to wall. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> just find your way to where you need to be. And eventually if it doesn't run away, you touch it. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, but it's a vehicle, so it can still shoot in the combat. But yeah. <laughs> or yeah. I mean, armies that have like heroic interventions that that can like, as they get closer to them, eventually hopefully get in there to melee combat with them. Like, mm -hmm. uh, if you take Mortarian's Anvil, you can actually spend one CP to give any unit heroic intervention. So like, if you're just within out of three and you didn't, and you can't charge or anything, at least you can spend that one CP and get in there to to fight those chickens. Yeah, that's yeah. one thing. And if you have any f form of like good shooting yourself, you also just make them your priority target. Yep. Because um, mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to be in a shooting lane, obviously, uh, yeah. if they want to shoot. So yeah, they're going to be out in the open. And uh, I yeah. I, I, oh yeah. It, and I feel like that the biggest thing is really just like going back to terrain, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, if you are a if you know how to play melee very well, like a melee army very well, that can get things like advance and charge. Um, anything that's like super fast, white scars might actually be pretty good now. Again, yeah. Um, you know they kind of fell out of flavor a little bit, but you know they they could be a good answer against uh against Admech. Like literally anything that can just move really fast, that can advance and charge, and that could just touch something. Yeah. And using stuff like your terrain, like your obscuring terrain. Mm -hmm. Um, if there's like a windowless uh terrain piece, amazing. Use that to your advantage and just like uh charge outside of that out of that terrain. They can't shoot at you because they don't have vision, so yeah. might as well use it to your advantage. It's a great way to do it. Um, and then also taking things like bring it down. If they're going to take Fusilovs, uh, Fusilovs will take up. Well, actually, no, bring it down isn't good. Because they don't have one point each. Yeah, they're only yeah. one point each. And yeah. I think most of their vehicles are like 10 wounds or less. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, so. Most of the ones they would bring, actually. So Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, screw bring it down. Take engage. Take retrieve. Yeah. Take any secondary yeah. that doesn't uh, yeah. Require your opponent to exactly. <laughs> to do anything with, yeah. and then you're fine. Yeah, like every other army that you fight against, you want to do that yeah. anyway. So when you play against these like armies that everyone feels like are like oppressive and overtaking that, you kind of just gotta stick to your game. 
yeah <laughs> to take engage take scramblers <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah, exactly exactly like, just play hey play each game like your point isn't really like your point isn't there you know i guess now, yeah okay as the most points as you can as an admin player spill the beans what what do we target <laughs> <laughs> so first things first if you can shoot the last can chickens and you have something that it threatens you take care of those boys um mm-hmm. If you have a sniper and you can shoot at something like a tech priest manipulus or a Skatari marshal, try 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 to shoot those guys off because they mm. really put the army together. Especially uh, tech priests with in in the holy order of the law guy, um, giving off luminous and blessings. Um, if you can shoot at it, you can shoot you shoot at it with your sniper. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe they're like five wounds T four, um, so. An eliminator, maybe maybe two squads of eliminators. That's obviously 150 points. You're sinking into <laughs> something to kill a target, but um, that I guess that thing is like the linchpin that makes that blob of guitar very hard to kill. The luminescer, luminescer, the tech priest manipulus. <laughs> I zoned out. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I gave you the secrets. And yeah, you yeah, didn't I listen. zoned out. Say it one more time for <laughs> no, me. No, that was your, I'm not repeating. It. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so the manipulus. Yeah, the, the, the tech priest manipulus. I guess if you can snipe off that whatever is giving off the holy or the low guy mm-hmm. and the lo- luminous and blessings, you can you can try. Um, yeah, that'd be a good way to uh, lessen. Uh, Lessen the blow. Yeah, lessen the blow. Um, what ab- what about uh, if like something like what was his name? Call. Call? Oh, sorry, it's call. Yeah, <laughs> what happens if he's on the table? I don't uh, think a he, lot of people bring uh, Yeah, no one's really running him anymore. He's yeah. like, very expensive. There's For what he, he does. Yeah, he also doesn't really he doesn't really work with Skatari very well. Gotcha. Which is, it's like, why bring him? He's 180 points. Yeah. When you could bring a marshal, that's yeah. 45 points. <laughs> <laughs> very cheap. Yeah, very cheap. And he's cheap. not a named character. Yeah, you could bring two of them. Yeah, you could bring three yeah, if we, you uh, really we, want yeah. to. We haven't talked about the army of renown yet. Um, oh, wait. Y'all, y'all, y'all can take out. multiples yeah. of those things without yeah. having to bring multiple detachments? Yep. Yeah, it's not a named oh, character. Wow. So. Yep. It's also not restri- It's not like Space well, Marines. Yeah, because Space oh, yeah, Marines yeah, yeah, has a restriction, yeah. and then so does Tau. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, mm, interesting. Yeah, we haven't even talked about the, the army of renown. That's yeah, coming the army out. Of renown. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Looks. I saw the stuff for it. It looks okay. Um, I I, I think it looks kind of scary. Yeah, <laughs> it, it makes your uh, Skatari an extra two points, but yeah. you get plus one attack, plus one leadership, and you get a five up invuln. Is it? Is this mm. coming in the Cheridan? Uh, I'm not sure which book exactly it's coming in. I, but it's an army of renown rules that are coming out soon. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, because it's going to increase them by two points, so there's going to be 10 points per model. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Being 20, a unit of 20. So 200. You're looking at 200 points. 210. With yeah, the, 210. Yeah. Actually, uh, with the Omni Specs and the Enhanced Data Tether. Yeah. So you're looking at that. So it does make them a little bit more tanky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the stratagems are pretty bonkers. There's yeah. one where you can have, uh, you can select two units that shoot at one enemy unit. Oh, that's what you said. And, yeah. Okay. yeah, and get plus one to wound on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I feel like that that's kind of redundant because of enriched rounds anyways. Yeah. Um, like, enriched rounds is just cheaper and better, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, well, well, I mean, because, like, you can only use, is enriched rounds a stratagem? Yeah. yeah. Right? So, I mean, if you've already used it once, you can't use it again, right? So, I guess it's just an option to use another yeah, plus one to wound. but it's three CP. Yeah, I saw that. But the yeah. thing is, is that it allows two units. I think I think that's why it's oh, yeah. three CP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's so, very strong. It's yeah. very strong. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you guys are thinking of uh, putting it on the marshals. Uh, I was thinking of putting it on the last kind of chickens. <laughs> 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 Y'all crazy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Plus one the wound. On, on last kind of chickens. Yeah, hitting on threes, winning on twos. You can make it so that you're hitting on oh. twos, winning on twos. Yeah. Oh. You're rolling ones. Mm, oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I thought that was that... Um, that it was against uh, uh, that you can only use it on. Uh, uh, I thought core. it said Skatari. Oh, wait, it's are Balsari's core? Uh, ooh, uh, uh, you are making me double check rules. Yeah, so I don't know off the top of <laughs> my head because <laughs> if, if it's core, then I think that I can use I'm it. I'm pretty sure they're. Yeah, I'm, I'm very certain they're core. Really, uh, the chickens are. Yeah. Wow. Core of what? I mean, now you might. Man, what? get out of here! <laughs> what do you mean it's core? Yeah. Like that doesn't make any. Yeah. S- why? <laughs> um, and then there's also no core. <laughs> the well, it does. I don't think they have to be core. Uh, for, for the strat, I, yeah. I think that they did. I'm pretty sure that they have to be core. Oh yeah, they do have to be core. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah. But I mean, uh, obviously, you guys are you, talk, you guys are talking about that strat. I don't even think that's the worst part, or I mean, the the strongest part. Um, 
Let's see. So Skatari Rangers get stealth optimization. So they always count as if they were in light cover if they don't move. Mm-hmm. That's pretty um, good. That's pretty good. It's also kind of redundant. Um, yeah. So if you're ready in Lucius and then you don't really need over the low guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, but uh, this is the one that I think is kind of crazy. Uh, Vanguard or Skatari Vanguard veterans get skirmish optimization. So they can roll 2d6 for advance, drop the lowest, and they never count. As being six or more models. Yeah, so they don't so get blast. They ignore blast. Yeah. That one's pretty good. Yeah, that one's pretty good too. But for me, in my opinion, blast I don't care about ever. Yeah. Like even even when I run like hordes of mm-hmm. like nids and stuff, I really don't care about blast. Yeah. Like it, yeah. it does nothing. Yeah. It's it's like, it's it's one of these things people see and they're like, Oh my god, I've never seen that before. It must be really good. And yeah, you know, like you know, people will like get the knee-jerk reaction out yeah yeah like yeah it's it's not as bad as you think <laughs> yeah yeah if anything um it'd be like flamers that are your biggest problem yeah but and i think that that's a really good answer um to ad mech are flamers like the new sisters uh they have a unit that can their, their flamers got bumped mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. crazy mm-hmm. so they're gonna be insanely good against ad mech when people are running like huge blobs of this Qatari. You just drop in, I think it's like your Zephyrims or something. I can't remember which unit it is, but they can definitely go in there and blend them all up with flamers and just like just melt down a squad of twenty. Like it, it wouldn't be too hard for them. Um and I think that that's like the biggest thing. Like if you're looking at an ad mech list, they're probably gonna be bringing a bunch of rangers. So you just bring a bunch of like flamers. Like if you're running uh like even Gene Sear Colts have an answer towards uh, the big blob. Like, think of them as big blobs that you would normally fight against, right? Like, yeah, it's minus... Yeah, you're they're, they ignore minus one, minus two. Who cares? Like, yeah, you only wound them on a four. Yeah, who cares? Like, it, you can still mow them down pretty easily. They're not that hard to get rid of. And if you ever get into melee combat with them, it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just, still fine. I'm trying to think about how you would deal with Admech as a Tau player. Besides Riptide go, <laughs> Riptide go <burr. laughs> um, I, I think melee armies actually stand a better chance against Admech because mm. they actually they have uh, their their way of winning, which is melee. Right. Yeah. Admech isn't. It's not. They they they're not that good in melee. <laughs> 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 melee specific units like dragoons or electro priests. Yeah. But if you're yeah. going gunline versus gunline, the better gunline, which is obviously Admech, is gonna win. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So how would you face off as Admech as a shooting army? And uh, I guess this kind of goes with what you were saying with Tau, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Because I'm trying to think right now, even as like Commander Blob, right? The XV8, what everybody has been running lately, um, is uh, like most of everyone's using either fusion blasters mixed with uh, the air burst mm-hmm. fragmentation cannons, or the uh, or the Richard Siegler special with missile pods. So like. Um, yeah, but you I only get AP one and two. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the missile pods are AP minus two. Yeah, and then the fusion blasters are four. But like, it's it's one shot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, the other the fragmentation zero. So like, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's a it's a it, it's tricky. What what's the save on a Skitari? Four. It's a four up. Yeah, maybe it's three up, at at most if you're in Lucius. If they didn't move right, uh, it's AP. You increase their save by one for against damage one. Against damage one. Yeah. Okay. So which, which is most of Tal's weaponry. Yeah. 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 So okay. So you're going to be taking flamers, right? You're going to be taking even like a double gaunt squad can probably do a really really nasty job against mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Um. So I, I think that there's a lot of stuff out there, especially if you're in melee combat. Like you bring your vanguard vets. Um, <laughs> yeah, you bring your lightning claws. Yeah, they're not going to do anything against Morty, but like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But well, against I mean, like you know your standard stuff like your Jakari and your Admech, they can wipe an entire squad. And remember, like this isn't a killy game anymore. Nah, yeah. it's all about objectives. objectives. Yeah, and if they're bringing those big blobs, you know they're not going to be stringing. They they could try to string them out, but like you could definitely wreak some havoc on them if uh, they overextend and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I feel like there's a lot of answers that you can do. Um, even with like shooting, there's a lot of things that have uh, like what 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 else is there? Uh, imp guard. If they're hidden well enough, they might be <laughs> able to do stuff <laughs> with their mana cores and their you know mm-hmm. heavy weapon squads and you know Orders, their yeah. artillery and stuff. Uh, I, I feel like that's like the best way to do it. Um, even I, maybe whirlwinds. What's up? What's the Forge World whirlwind? Oh, the um, Scorpius. Yeah, the Scorpius. Yeah. That, yeah. that thing. The, the mm-hmm. problem with that though is it's a uh, 
minus two AP oh, yeah. <laughs> and two damage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you're, you're losing a lot of efficiency there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which they just ignore. So you might as well just bring something that has zero AP, which just is the normal whirlwind. Yeah. yeah. Just bring Vanguard vets. Yeah. Yeah. Mi- minus two AP. Yeah, what are they going to do? Or they Kill minus them? three. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You can or, try. Have we seen that com- on this channel? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bring company vets. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, being the AdMech player, how do you recommend other people to deploy? Because like a lot of people lose the game at deployment. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I think I think a lot of people get overzealous and try to get like that turn one alpha strike because it's really cool. But you, you really just gotta take your time, pick and choose your fights, and deploy as safe as possible. Get everything mm-hmm. behind that obscuring, that mm-hmm. dense. Yeah, <laughs> if you can. Um, yeah. That's, well, that's d- does getting behind dense even really matter that much when you can ignore the penalty or your minus one? You're right. Yeah, there, there, there are ways to ignore the hit modifiers. Yeah, yeah, so, so it yeah. doesn't really matter. Obscuring, oh, yeah, yeah. obscuring it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want obscuring. Um, I feel like that what you should really do is actually just really talk to your local game store and talk about the terrain. Yeah. yeah. Because I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to go up to a game store, look at the terrain, and be like, I can't win with this. It's impossible. And I, I feel like that's the first step when it comes to fighting against Admech. It's not even when you put your army on the table. It's what the terrain is going to look like because yep. – I think that's the biggest thing. Like people Be- are underestimating how important terrain is in ninth edition. I mean, yep. GW literally gave us rules. Yeah. Yep. So many rules, so many rules for yeah. terrain that a lot of game stores aren't really utilizing that much. And yeah. that's the biggest problem. I, uh, I had a, uh, one of my league matches actually against a guy who I think it was like his only his second game of ninth. He mm-hmm. played a lot of eighth. And then as, as I was, he asked me to set up the terrain. And as I was setting up, he's like, man, this looks like a lot of terrain. And he was he was playing Drakari, so you know he kind of doesn't care if there's a lot of terrain or not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, look, yeah. I mean, but the still, boats. like I felt like it was just a normal amount, and mm-hmm. he felt like it was way too much. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, it goes to show a lot of people might have that old eighth mindset where you know mm-hmm. there's not much terrain. And, <laughs> and I mean, like there, there's there's going to be team tournaments too, where there's going to be a uh, terrain table, or there's going to be tables with not as much terrain. Yep. Right. And if there's going to be tables with not as much terrain, that's where the Admech players are going to probably yeah. thrive in the most. <laughs> um, but, like, even without that, like, Admech can still play well. We very, yeah, you know, I feel like that we kind of circled back to that topic of. <laughs> well, the, yeah. the thing that I was just going to say is that people also need to remember what the different types of terrain do. Besides, like, obscuring, there's, you know, they need to remember that things are breachable. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, you can pass through that wall. And touch yeah. and touch those dirty, dirty admec players. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's like the, think of it. You, you know what this reminds me of? This is like literally the same way that people felt against Tau in like eighth, eighth and yeah. seventh edition. Is yeah. like how do you fight them when they just shoot you off the board? Mm-hmm. And it's the same answer. Touch them. Yeah. yeah. Just touch them. Just yeah. reach touch out them. and just be like, ah, yeah. ah, Just go on the objective, <sighs> and then if they get close, you touch them. Yeah, and you just touch them, and then you just keep them in there, keep them in combat, learn how to wrap. Yeah. yeah, that's the most important one. Yeah, um, and then even if they desperate break out, just spend the CP to cut them down. Or to something. cut them down, yeah. lots of mortal wounds will be really great against yeah. Admech as well. Mm-hmm. Um, damage that carries over any weapons that do damage mm-hmm. that carries over mm-hmm. that'd be mm-hmm. really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're weapons. Yeah. Yeah. They're uh, obviously they're a very good army, but I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they'll reach Drakari levels pre FAQ. <laughs> I yeah. don't think they're ever. Well, were they like 60, 70 percent win rate? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't think there'll be that. Yeah, yeah it was the, it was the new hotness, and all the Drakari players finally came out. They were like, "I've been waiting." Yeah, for yeah. This. this is my time yeah. to shine. And all the admin <laughs> players are just like, "I'm still painting coal." <laughs> 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 I got my incense. <laughs> yeah, I'm I praying saw, to the uh, Messiah. Man, I gotta paint forty Skitari. Yeah, <laughs> and then I gotta paint a fuselage. <laughs> Uh, and the chickens. I have to build and paint the chickens. The, yeah, the, 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 the dude, the iron striders are not very fun to build. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. <laughs> My hat's still off to you for picking yellow. Yeah, yeah. jeez. Yeah. All right, it, it's it's a lot easier with the airbrush now, but yes. <laughs> okay, I think that we have come to the end of the show. <laughs> And it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, so I think that that's it for now. Um, I think that we talked about Admech as much as we could, gave our ideas of how to fight them, um, things to look out for. Um, bring your flamers. Bring your flamers. Use your terrain. Use your terrain. Yep. Learn terrain Bring lots rules. of shots. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, you know what's great? If you bring lots of shots and flamers, 
is going to double up because it'll be good against both Admech and Drukari. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just bring them. They're all T3, yeah. you know, and yep. unless one of them uses uh, four up, uh, you know, uh, transhuman. Yeah. But it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you'll be uh, fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, that's it for today. Thank you guys for checking us out on Chapter Tactics. That This is episode number 210. Uh, if you guys like this episode, make sure that you guys subscribe, like, and keep listening to the rest of the shows on the Frontline Gaming Network. Uh, we really do appreciate it. And uh, you know what? Let's do something spicy. Something spicy. If you guys have any questions that you guys want us answered in the next episode, give us a tweet over at twitter.com forward slash dicecheckyt. And we will answer them on the stream. Um, not on the stream. On, on the episode. We'll, we, we'll do it on the episode. We'll yeah, do yeah. it like at the end. A round uh, table. Yeah. Also use hashtag Dice Check Podcast. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's easier for us to find. Yes. 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 yes that'd be great. Do that. <laughs> do that whole thing. Uh, and yeah. So we'll see you guys next time on the next episode of Chapter Tactics. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.